Hello everyone, welcome to video 5 in the C-Star Roundup series. Today I'll be processing another target, in this case NGC 891, which is a galaxy in Andromeda. Uh, and I'll be processing that in a free program called Cyril, if this is your first time joining us. And I'll also be demonstrating another program today which I find very useful. And uh, if you're new to astrophotography or processing C-Star images, uh, you might find this very useful. This is also applicable to any other uh, telescope or camera that you're using so this is not just for the sea star and here is a list of everyone who sent in some images and in total uh, I selected the best 3.3 hours of data out of everything that we received and I combined it into one stacked raw image which you can download from the link at the bottom of this video and you can process along as well if you like. For instructions on how to transfer data from your C-Star to the computer check out the link in the description of this video or check out the previous video. Now to get started here is how to upload the data from your your computer onto the server so that it reaches me. Once you have copied the files over from the C star to your computer, we need to zip up all of these files to upload them. So simply select all of the files. On Windows, we can do that by hitting Ctrl A to select all of the files, then simply right clicking and clicking Compress to Zip File, and that will compress all of the files into one zip folder that we can upload. Once you have the zip file, you can click on the link in the description of this video and that will take you to this page. Now you simply hit select files and select that zipped folder and click open. Now you simply need to type in your first and last name so we can give you proper credit for the files you submitted. And then simply hit upload. And as soon as you see this confirmation screen saying upload has finished, you are all done. So I'm sure most of you already have Cyril, but this is the other program that uh, we have linked in the description of this video. Uh, this is called Graxpert, but specifically version 3.1, which I provided that link to. And you can go to the bottom of this page and download the correct version. Uh, so for most people, it'll be Graxpert Windows AMD64. So that's the standard Windows version. If you're on a Mac, you would use one of these links. And if you're on Linux, you would use this top link. So just download this, install the program. And the first time you use it, it might ask you to download a few other files, which is perfectly normal. Okay, so there's what Graxpert looks like. And this is my processing methodology on the right. So in, in Graxpert 3.1, we'll be doing some of these earlier steps and then we will switch over to Cyril. So in Graxpert, uh, you'll go to this first tab at the top. If you can't see load image, if it's like this, just hit the plus button. Click on load image and open up the image. You navigate to where you have this image saved and open it up. And the first thing we can do here is crop. So click on the plus sign to open crop. And over here, you can crop the image to whatever size you want. Now I've already cropped this image to get rid of the edges so we can skip this step in that case. But if you did have to crop it, you would basically use these circles at the side to crop it. And then when you are ready, just hit apply crop. But in this case, I don't need to crop it. So I'm just going to undo that. So once you've cropped the image to look the way you want, you can go to the next step, which is background extraction. Click on the plus button here and leave everything at default. Just click calculate background. And that will automatically neutralize any gradients in the background. Uh, I love Graxpert because it makes all of this stuff so easy. Next step, you'll go to deconvolution. And you can leave these details uh, at the default values, but what deconvolution will do is sharpen only the galaxy, but not the stars in Graxpert. So if we click deconvolve image, this will take a second. And I'm going to zoom in here so you can see in a bit more detail. So this is after deconvolution, deconvolution, before, 
after. So you can see the Galaxy's disk has been sharpened quite a bit and it looks much more detailed. And of course, if you do want to go to any previous steps, you just click on this downward facing arrow at the top and you can move backwards to any of the steps. Now, next we want to denoise the image because as you can see in the background, there is a little bit of noise. So click on the plus button by denoise. You can adjust the strength of the denoising, but first let's just try the default value here. And this might take a little bit longer on your computer if your computer is, uh, is fairly old, but still pretty fast. Okay, now we can look at the background here and it does look a bit better. Let's uh, look at the previous one, previous, new okay so the denoising has done its job yeah and if you if you think the noise is still too much you can denoise it again or you can go back one step and increase the strength uh, of the denoising here and apply it again but the background is going to be quite a bit darker in our final image so i think this amount of denoising is quite sufficient so that's the default value and you can uh, you can zoom in and out by using your mouse wheel and if you want to move around you can just grab the image and move around using the left click on your mouse now click on the plus sign and save the image. You can select the format over here. Since we are still going to be doing some other processing in Cyril, you can save the image as a 32-bit TIFF or 32-bit FITS. I'm just going to save it as a 32-bit FITS. So select that, click Save Selected. Find a place where you want to save it. Click Save and now you're done. So you can see this new icon just appeared in this directory. Uh, the name should be the same, but the uh, logo over here, you can ignore that. So now we're done with Graxbird. We will close this down. Now we will open up Cyril, which I'm sure you're familiar with by now. And uh, if this is your first time using Cyril, click this home button at the top and set the directory where you want everything to be saved and worked on. I've selected the same directory where these images are saved. And now I can just drag and drop the image that we got from Graxpert into Cyril. And of course, as usual, the image looks very, very dark when you bring it in. That's because the image is still in its linear format and that is completely fine. So we are going to go to step five in Cyril. So we'll skip some of the earlier steps that we used to do in Cyril because now we're doing them in Graxpert. So in Cyril, the first thing is color calibration. So first we will set the image from linear to auto stretch. And I, I always select high definition first, then select auto stretch. So to do color calibration on this image, we're going to go up here to this tab, uh, this downward facing arrow. If you have this maximized, it'll say image processing, but I want to keep it like this so you can see some of the other steps I'm taking on the side. So click on this arrow and click on color calibration and select photometric color calibration. And we'll just type in the name of the target here. So NGC891. There it is. And you can leave everything as default. Just click OK. And click Close. So this has automatically oriented the image correctly and it has gotten rid of most of the background cast. Now again, the background looks noisy right now, but that's because this is just how the image is being displayed. In our final image, the background will be a lot darker. So the next step is to stretch the data using generalized hyperbolic stretch or histogram transform. Now, uh, in my previous videos, I have used generalized hyperbolic stretch to stretch the images, but today I'm just going to use histogram transformation. You can try both of them and see which one works better for you. But for this particular target, um, I think histogram tr transformation did a pretty great job. Uh, the dynamic range of this image isn't that high, so there are no areas where, where it's super, super bright and then the background is super, super dim. Uh, it's not like the Orion Nebula, which I would definitely be using generalized hyperbolic stretch for. So in this case, I will go to image processing and to stretch the data, I will go to histogram transformation instead of generalized hyperbolic stretch. So I can come down here where it says auto stretch and just set this image back to linear. So we'll see how the image is actually looking right now. 
and to stretch the image um, on the left is complete black on the right is complete white and in the middle are your mid-tones so you'll grab this mid-tones slider and just pull it to the left and you can see as you pull this towards the left the image starts getting a little bit brighter you can click apply click reset and now start pulling this to the left again I like to do this in smaller steps uh, because that gives us a little bit more control than just doing it all at once so click apply reset and let's do this one more time there we go now the image is starting to look good and as you can see the background is no longer very noisy now what you can also do is you can grab this left hand side and move it towards the right that will darken the background but what we can also do is just uh, zoom in at the top here so there we go so now we have a bit finer control over the brightness of the target and how dark the background is so if you move this to the right the background gets darker and I think that is looking pretty decent I'll make the galaxy a little bit brighter okay so I think that is a good background level I usually don't like the background to be completely black okay so that looks pretty good to me I will click apply and click close now next step is to remove any green cast in the image if you see any green noise in the background or if there's still a remaining green cast uh, so to do that we will just go up here to image processing and remove green cast which is down here or remove green noise so click on that you can leave these settings as default and just click apply and we can check before and after so using this back arrow this was before this was after before after so it looks like there was a little bit of a green cast there still but that's taken care of now next we can adjust the color saturation of the image if we need so we can go to image processing and click on color saturation and over here you can adjust the amount of saturation so as you adjust this you can see this changing in real time so if you want to target some particular uh, particular parts of the image for example if you want to decrease these halos around the stars which are caused by chromatic aberration uh, you can click on this area over here the hue and select cyan blue and now as you decrease this a little bit you'll see oh, we need to have preview enabled you'll see these halos kind of disappear so in this image we don't have a lot of blue or pink so we can do this but most images um, you can just use this global option so I will um, yeah select cyan blue once I'm happy with the colors of the stars just click apply and then we can do that once again go to color saturation and this time we can select the orange brown which is the color of the galaxy and then we can increase just that part if we want to increase some of the color in the galaxy itself without making the chromatic aberration around the stars worse there we go so click apply and we are done with the color saturation and next we're just going to save the image so up here you'll see this downward facing arrow you, you can click on that and then up here you can select the name that you want to save this image under so I will select NGC 891 final and down here you can select the image format you want to use um, normally I save the image first as a as a .tiff file save that and uh, since we're not going to be making any more changes you can use 16-bit unsigned integer and save so that way it doesn't take a lot of space on your hard drive but you still have the option to edit this later if you want and you can click on this again and save it now as a different file so I would save it as a JPEG for sharing online and again you can select the name here NGC891 final so in quality I always select 100% click save and now if we check this folder that uh, that we were using you'll see this is the final TIFF file and this is the final JPEG file so this is the one I will be uploading online so as you can see 
we got a pretty good image. There's a uh, quite a bit of detail in this galaxy. You can see this prominent dust lane going across with a couple of little fuzzy patches of dust coming up off that lane and you can see a little bit of a bulge as well in the center of this galaxy and you can look up the Hubble Space Telescope image of this galaxy to see what it would actually look like uh, using a big big professional telescope but of course I'm very happy with the results we got here so if you downloaded this image and you're processing it make sure to share it online and let us know so we can see what your results looked like and you can also tag me at Abdur Astro uh, so I'm notified when you share this image so I can see what kind of results you got. Again I want to thank everyone who sent in some data and this is the list of everyone who participated for October 2024. The target for next month, which has already been announced on the All-Star Telescope Facebook page, is NGC 281, also known as the Pac-Man Nebula. And this is a fairly large nebula in the constellation of Cassiopeia. And I think this would be a good target for our sea stars for this month, as it's fairly large and bright. And for this target, I would recommend having the nebula filter on. So I look forward to seeing all the data that you send in. And of course, the link to send in the data is at the bottom of this video. Thanks again for watching and clear skies.